in today's video, I will share and show you the way how you really should practice scales and not just approach it as a warm up exercise. I mean, on one side, yes, it is a great warm up exercise, of course, but there's so much that you can discover in there and you can develop many things, both right and left hand. Also, for the beginners among you, I will break things down so you will have completely a different point of view when playing scales. And after watching this video and applying the things that I'm sharing with you, your scales will be on a completely different level. Hi everyone, I am Ilya Labrev, cellist, and I am completely ready for this lesson. If you're ready to, leave a like to this video and subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. Now let's dive right into the scales. <laughs> And here we go with the first tip, strong left hand fingers. With a strong left hand, I mean a precise articulation, so no jelly fingers. Because when you have lazy jelly fingers, this will affect your intonation. So let's take a look, what do I mean? So I start first version with strong fingers, well articulated, and the other version with lazy jelly fingers, and you will clearly hear the difference. So see, it does make sense when we have a strong left hand. Cool, now we go to tip number two and here we're gonna talk a little bit about shifting. So here I want quick and smooth and light position changes. This can be a little bit misleading, especially when I ask to my students to do light and quick shiftings, sometimes they misunderstand and they jump, which is wrong. Because by jumping too fast and using big motions, you might uh, hit the wrong pitch, so the wrong note, and it's gonna be out of tune. The thumb on our left hand is our support, so make sure that you don't squeeze the thumb in the neck. The thumb has to be relaxed and needs to be feel free. I will show you now a dumb but useful exercise in order to understand the feeling and the motion. So this is very important to keep in mind. Make sure that your thumb is completely relaxed and not pressing on the neck. Make sure that you clear this out with your teacher because or else you're gonna have really a hard time playing any shifts. Now going back into the quick and light shiftings, it's very important to apply this when you are playing slowly. Because when you raise up the tempo, so when you will play it faster, the shiftings will get more accurate. If you decide to stay on the lazy path, then you never will be able to play scales at a fast tempo. So the decision is yours. <laughs> Tip number three, practice the painful places separately. Let's say that you are having problems with a certain shift. Don't just ignore and continue as if nothing happened. So practice the places where it hurts the most. If you need to repeat for 20 times, 30 times, 50 times, so be it. Because the more you train it, the more you will get familiar with it. You still there with me? Because we're not done yet. And now we are at tip number four, which is left hand anticipation. Yep, that's right, left hand anticipation. Because without it, you're going nowhere. <laughs> 
So what do I mean with left-hand anticipation? Left-hand anticipation is knowing what will happen next, be one step ahead. So that means that you always need to be ready for the next note. Examples are big finger distances, small finger distances, big distance shifts, short distance shifts, and so on. Your hand and fingers always need to be ready in position. And by having a good left hand anticipation, your chances will massively increase when it comes to intonation, sound, and you can name so much more. And now comes the last tip, so tip number five, which is equal bow use or bow distribution as I like to call it. It's very important that you have a very organized bow use because if not, this can affect a lot on the sound on the cello. So make sure that you calculate very well your bow use and don't forget, if you speed up the tempo with the left hand, the right hand always stays the same. So the speed always stays the same. It doesn't matter if you play four notes, eight notes, 60 notes, 32 notes in one bow, the pace is exactly the same. So let's check it out in the next example. Cool, so these were my top five tips that I apply when I practice scales and you should too. If you like this lesson, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you are not subscribed yet. And if you want to give value to the content I'm delivering to you, I have a Patreon page. You can find the link in the video description below. It's a page where you can donate any amount you wish and in return you will get monthly rewards depending on the amount you donate. Thank you so much for watching and the next lesson we're gonna see how to improve and produce a beautiful sound on the cello with easy tips for all levels. So beginners, advanced, professionals, okay, professionals they know already how to produce a great sound of course. I'll see you in the next lesson. Have a good one. Cheers.